The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 6th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. A bit more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on at 877 927 Now, if you can't dial them, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. We've got nothing in the queue right now, so now would be a good time. Now, inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And then inside our Tigers General, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a little bit of a mixed bag out there. That mix coming from the Russell, which is off eight points. The NASDAQ composite down four. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices are trading to the upside. Dow's up 90 points. S&P's up 12. NASDAQ 100 is up eight. Semis are flat. They're up one point. Trannies are up 31. That's two tenths per cent. New York Stock Exchange up three tenths or 43 points. Gold is off five bucks, trading at 1770. Silver's up 14 pennies, trading at 1802. Light sweet crude is up 11 cents at 87 bucks. Natural gas is off 34 cents, trading at 844. 30 year treasury down nearly two points, trading out at 13307. The movers and the shakers, the movers to the upside, you got N Pays Energy up 12 bucks, that's up four and a half percent. S, uh, you got BlackRock is up 11 and a half, that's up nearly two percent. SP Global is up about 11 bucks or three percent. Eli Lilly up about 11 bucks, three and a half percent. United Medical 11 bucks, two percent. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings off 26 bucks, one and a half percent. Shockwave Medical 14 bucks, five percent. SVB Financial off 11 bucks or nearly three percent. Palo Alto Networks down nearly 10 bucks, nearly. 2%. Uh, Restoration Hardware is off 555. She traded out at 246.62. So certainly we have things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No requests out there. So let's go take a look at the uh, let's go take a look at the daily equity future contracts first. Then we'll start diving down. Give me a moment. We're going to change our screens out here. We'll have the white backgrounds. Oh, I didn't just start that. Okay. So uh, we won't do that. I restarted things. What we will do is go, uh, well, we'll still go, we'll take a look at uh, each of the equity future contracts individually. So we're still going to change our screens here. We'll have the white background screens in the upper left-hand corner momentarily. You will see the daily chart for the NQ. What you should notice out here is, one, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. That pattern was completed on September the 1st. Why? Because there was a nice bullish hammer candle that formed there. That is a key low. Write this down on your pad of paper, 12017.75. Now, we'll be rolling over to the December contract this week. But right now, that's the number to be paying attention to for the September contract. If there were to be a close below that level today, that'll negate that pattern signal, and that would suggest lower price. If we take a look at the 300-minute, the five-hour time frame chart, it still maintains its roads momentum indicator bottom. That pattern will remain as long as price continues to close above 1201775. We've got that same pattern set up inside the four-hour time frame chart. 
on the 120 minute time frame chart. This formed a TD9 count top. It did it at 4 o'clock this morning. And price, in essence, pulled back, tested, and rejected both the bottom of its profile and its TD9 count breakout level in the 12054. You know that expression that Tom likes, and here comes a dollar. I've got to send him a dollar if I say it, which is if you can't bust him down, price will try to bust them to the upside. We'll come back to that momentarily. The NQ. On a 60-minute basis, does it have a uh, bottoming signal? No, nothing that I see out there. A TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute uh, chart. And that did what it was supposed to do. So this is really the key area here. When I say it's what it's supposed to do, we get a valid top or a bottom. What you will find is that nine times out of ten, and at some point in time I'll be able to test that nine times out of ten theory out there, price makes its way to that oscillator and change line. Well, that occurred as we were coming on to the uh, show this morning. And uh, that 12, 125 ish area is a real key level of resistance. If price can overtake that, it's got other resistance. Right now it's at 12, 175, but that would suggest a further rally. Nothing really to report on here. Well, the, the 10 minute chart had a TD9 count bottom pattern as well. Price running into resistance at 12, 121. Its next resistance, if price can take out that level, don't have an indication that it will, but its next level will be 12, 188.75 from a resistance standpoint. So if we come back to the ranch out here, the real key charts are the, the real key chart is really the daily time frame and the bottom of that hammer candle. Now what you should also notice here, remember I said like we just took a look at on the 30 minute chart, when you form a bottom pattern, typically price will make its way to its oscillator and change line. That actually increased uh, uh, today but when we see that it's oscillator and change line, that's the upper left-hand chart change colors. That really increased the odds of price net level testing. But nonetheless, if price closes below the bottom of the hammer candle, no, that test will be deferred. Otherwise, expect a rally up towards the 12,653 level. That is the message from the NQ. Let's go take a look at the ES mini charts out there. This will take a moment here to populate. And while it's populating, I'll take a swig technical term for Stevie's Thirsty out there. We take a look at the ES Mini. Unlike the NQ, which only had a buy the D point pattern, the ES Mini has both a TD9 count and buy the D point pattern. Both those patterns were confirmed on September the 1st out there uh, with its bullish hammer candle. So the level we'll be watching here, key level, is the bottom of that hammer candle. That area is 3903.50. Testing it, no problem, as it did so far today. Closing below that, again, 3903.50 would be a problem. If we take a look at the five hour time frame chart out here, do we have any kind of a bottom pattern? Uh, the answer is we do. We still have a rose momentum indicator bottom that is in place out here. On the four hour time frame chart, that's the same signal. So this matches what we looked at inside the NQ. The 120 minute chart, which also formed a TD9 count top, took price right back to it, right back to its breakout level of 3918.50. Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. The uh, the wicks, the upper and lower shadows out there, whichever you prefer to uh, use as your terminology, are nothing more than the screaming memes. That means it's nothing more than the emotion during that time frame. In this case here was a 120 minute time frame. Price holding supported 3918.50 out there. Resistance on a two hour time frame is 3958.50. And above that, 4017. The one hour chart still holds its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. No bottom signal on the 30 minute chart here. We did have that on the 30 minute NQ chart. And you do have that TD9 count bottom on the 10 minute chart. This suggests that the ES mini should at least go target 3951.50. A close above 3951.50 suggests that we had higher and higher to where. What the ES mini should do over the next several days is get up towards that 4065 level. That's the oscillator and change line, which like the NQ also changed colors today. See Rhodes with TFN. We'll be back in just a few. We're gonna take a look at Saba for Joey D in the Tiger's Den. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at ticker symbol SAVA. That's SAVA. That is Cassava Sciences. That's trading out at 2760 as we uh, speak right now. It's trading with inside a bullish structure daily profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at about 2569. As long as price closes above 2645 today, Joey D, that suggests a run up to the top of its profile. That's at 3136. Now there's a high volume high out here, that bearish shooting star. If price can get above 3136, then that should go at least test that high. That high, by the way, is 3487. If we look at it, so green oscillator, so here's where we have a change in color in the oscillator and change line. What happens? Price pulls back, tests, and rejects that level. However, on Friday last week, we did see price close below that area, but it ran right down into support at 24.48. So support is held inside of Cassava Sciences. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is above the top of its weekly profile, 24.48. It has a red oscillator and change line, so it's not as bullish as the daily, at least not just yet. But it still is bullish with price above resistance at 24.48. The monthly time frame for Cassava Sciences has got a nice TD9 count bottom. Price is back inside its monthly profile. Price should go target at least 37.85. So our call on Cassava Sciences right now, if it closes above 26.45, look for a run to 31.36. If it can get above that, uh, then we could be looking at a move up towards the 35-ish area and above that, 37.85, which is its monthly oscillator and change line. So Joey D., I hope that helps you out with regard to Cassava Sciences. Thanks so much for the questions uh, or the question. And uh, let's go on to our next request. Well, on a 30-minute uh, basis, by the way, you've got what looks like a A to B equals CD to the upside that is attempting to form out here. Not just simply, uh, but there is resistance at 2853. So even though we've got a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom, 
out here. Again, watch 28.53. If price can close above that, Joey D, that suggests that price continues to move higher. So that's the 30-minute daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts for Cassava Sciences. Let's do the same thing for the request coming in from LB. LB says, can we take a look at NU? So let's get those uh, charts fired up on our screen, read the rest of the question, and tell me what the technicals are saying. I'm still holding long on this one, but you're looking for short to medium term outlook. So you got it. Uh, we'll still give you the daily outlook here for excuse me, ticker symbol NU, which is uh, what, Nucor? Uh, NU Holdings out here. So not enough on the monthly time frame uh, for us to do much with because it hasn't traded long enough. That also kind of puts us, restricts us on the weekly time frame. Uh, there is a TD9 count, but that has not confirmed a top because bar number seven is the high of that pattern. And you do have a confirmed weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. So it's really going to be, Lee, all about the daily time frame chart. So what does a daily time frame chart show us? Well, one, there was an A to B equal CD pattern. We can visually see that down here. Uh, here's your A point down at the June lows, your B point up here at the July high, a retracement down into a, a July low towards the end of the month. You get your A to B, B to C, C to D. That completes when you get that bearish sash candle. Okay, so we know that we've got that. However, price is remaining above the top of its daily profile, 465. That's where sellers reside. Now, those sellers may become the actual buyers is what the signal was from three days ago as price got down, tested, and rejected that level. So you're really in kind of a neutral-ish type signal here, Lee, for the daily time frame. Do we have a reason to sell? No, because support has held. What would you need to see a reason to sell? Certainly a close below 403. It's bullish structure daily profile. We do not have any signals that that's where price is going to head to. So um, intermediate term wise, the next level of resistance to the upside would be 769. To the downside, support would be at 361. LB, I don't know if there's anything more that I can share with you in looking at these charts out there. So I hope that that technical analysis is what you were looking for. Thanks so much for the request. You have a, a terrific Tuesday. And I look forward to uh, getting back with you again soon on your next request. There was also a request that came in late on Friday, and that was to take a look at fuel cell, F-C-E-L. And the question, oops, not, I got to, sorry, mis mistyped there, so this will screw things up for Stevie, but that's okay. F-C-E-L, we'll try to get that rolling here real quick. The question was, has fuel cell confirmed an A to B equal CD to the downside? So, actually, to answer that question, we will go over and take a look at the black background charts here first. Give me a moment. We'll change our screen so we can come back to these white background charts and see what additional information we might be able to gleam out of it. So, that's weird. Here we go. Okay. So now if we take a look at, let me just expand out the chart. Let me pull it back just a tad. We'll take a look at A to, whoops, we'll take a look at that A to B equals CD pattern out here. So what we're looking at is a small A to B equals CD. So the swing point or the B point is going to be the low. Let's get our data box so we can clearly see it. It's going to be the low of the pattern. Low of that pattern is either going to be, so 398 on A23, 398 on A22. We'll go ahead and use 323. So our A point, very easy to see out here. That is the high from August 15th. The low point, we identified that, the B point that is. And then the uh, swing point for the C point is going to be the high of August 25th. Whoops, that didn't work. Let's try that again, Stevie. Get those uh, magic fingers working. Our A point out here, again, the high. From August the 15th, that didn't take. Why not? There we go. Now we got the B point, the low of August 23rd, the C point, the high of August 25th. One to one would get us to 321. And to answer the question, 398 was the close, which had 9.7 million shares. And on Friday, the close was at 394 with 9.9 .9 million shares. So you do have it confirmed. A to B equals CD. That one to one price projection is in the 321 level. If we go back and we take a look at the white background screens out here, what we're going to see on the daily time frame is there is support at $3.35. That is its TD9 count breakout level. So you're going to want to Watch that 321 to 335 level on a uh, pullback out here. Uh, support on the daily time frame is 320. Uh, the weekly time frame is 322. That matches up to the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And on the monthly time frame, I don't really have a whole lot out here for fuel cell. FCEL 
was the uh, ticker symbol. So it does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Should get us into that 335 to 321 level. And that was, uh, I believe that was David in uh, Tomball, Texas out there that had that request from Friday. Hector and the fuel injectors. Hector wants to take a look at ticker symbol VB. So let's get that up on our screens out here on the uh, white background screens. And let's try to figure out what VB is. VB is Vanguard Index Funds Small Cap ETF. Hector's question goes like this. BB, this AB equals CD down. Is this a green light for a buy the D point nibble out there? So uh, what basically Hector is asking for is do we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside? And should he take a nibble at it? How do you like that for translation? Oh, Steve, you're just simply amazing out there. Okay, well, let's go take a look at the actual chart. That one I can interpret, and maybe that'll help answer the question. So we're looking, we're going to go back to the black background screens. So I presume that the A to B equals CD pattern that Hector and Patty are looking at out here is with the A point starting at the high from August 16th. The B point is going to be that low, let's see, 196.02, 196.17, 196.02 02 is the low. Uh, so that's our, that's the low of August 22nd. That's the B point. The C point out here is the high from August 26th. When we come back to this break, you answer the question for Hector and Patty, and then I'll do it as soon as we get back. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be back in just a few. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at ticker symbol VB. That's the Vanguard Index Funds for the small cap ETF. We're answering a question for Hector and Patty, and they want to know if uh, this is a, uh, if they can nibble, nibble being the key word here, at a uh, bottom for Vanguard. And uh, the answer is yes. 
Why is the answer yes? Well, first, this completed a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD to the downside. Why does Stevie say it was completed? I say it was completed because it went ahead and completed that bullish hammer candle. Now, it's on the trading day of September 1st. Now, as I say that, what we can also say is that candle on that day of September 1st was a gap to the downside. So we have and a gap to the downside candle is a bearish signal. So you have one bullish, one bearish. Which one is it? Well, Hector, what I typically like to do is fill in that gap area to then say, okay, if we fill that in, color that in, in this case here, it would be red. Does that still generate a bullish reversal candle? And the answer to that would be no. And the reason is because the body of the candle would be more than twice the size of that lower wick out there. So that says, yeah, nibble would be, that doesn't mean it, it has not bottomed. It just is a little bit suspect because you have both the bullish and the bearish reversal signals. If we look at the weekly time frame chart here, what price is doing it right now, it's trading below the top of its profile. That's a 186.91. That too then, uh, Hector and Patty, suggests caution. Why? Because if price is just Tuesday. But if price did close below 186.91, and more importantly, if price closed below 185.39, that's on the daily time frame. That's the low of that hammer candle. Potential, well, we know it's a hammer candle, but it's also a gap to the downside. That would then suggest lower price. And lower price would be 176.59 to 180.03. The bottom of the monthly profile is 181.62. Now, I can tell you the monthly time frame has a TD9 count pattern that was actually confirmed uh, last uh, month out there. The low of that pattern is bar number eight. That was the trading day or the trading month of June of 2022. But as we can see here, uh, price is, oh, there's a brand new monthly profile that is uh, forming out here with support at 181.62 and resistance at 217.60. So Hector and Patty's question was, can they nibble here? They can. I prefer you nibble at something that didn't have both a bullish and a bearish candle that we were using to confirm the bullish signal up there. I don't know if that made sense to you. I hope that it made sense to you. It's just, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's risky. It's riskier than what you'd like it to normally be. Now, if I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we'll move that over to this black background area, and we're just looking for signals out here. Formed a nice TD9 count bottom. That happened at 11 o'clock in the morning on September 1st, and then it formed a nice TD9 count top, and that happened at 1130 on September 2nd. And then what did price do? Pull back to test support. So what you really have going on here right now, uh, Hector and Patty, is a consolidation between TD9 count breakout support around 185.44 and TD9 count breakdown resistance, 190.78. Now, a close above 190.78 on a 30-minute chart would be a positive thing and suggest a further rally out there. So can you nibble at it? Absolutely, you can nibble at it. It's just one that is a little bit questionable, so to speak. So I hope that helps you out. I hope you had a great uh, holiday weekend, and thanks so much for writing in. We'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. McGuppy, inside our Tiger's Den, says, Hey, Steve-O, hope you had a great weekend. I did a very exhausting weekend, or so it is now. Uh, it was uh, nonstop activities, uh, lots of everything. So great weekend, uh, but now what I need is vacation from a weekend. And by the way, I will be on vacation on Thursday and Friday of this week. Will not be able to do a show. I will be on vacation the following Thursday and Friday as well. And will not be able to do shows uh, then. But let's uh, go take a look at this question here for McGuppy who wants to take a look at XBI. So let me get those uh, screens here fired up. Let's read the question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, you can read it yourself. But the question goes like this. Could you look at XBI? Looks to me like it wants to fill the gap it created in early August around the $81 level. Right now it's trading at $82.40. Do you see that area as a potential bottom using your techniques? And do you see it going higher or lower in the upcoming weeks out here? So as we take a look at XBI, one of the things that we'd be looking for is the A to B equals CD pattern. So let's go take a look at that. Let's see if this uh, confirmed anything. When I say confirmed anything, did it at least get to the one-to-one -one area? And then did we get a bullish reversal candle? So the high of this stock for A to B equals CD, that's at 95.17. That is at 95.14. That is at 95.10. So it's going to be the trading day. The A point is August the 11th. The B point, that's easy. That's going to be August 22nd. The C point is also easy. That's August 25th. So. The one-to-one -one price projection is 81.11. The low, 
today is 8172. The question is, is that close enough? And we actually had a low out there on the trading uh, day of August 30th that got down to 81.97. So 81.11 versus 81.97. Is that a completed A to B equals CD pattern? I wish I had a, a, a definitive way to be able to answer that question. It has potential out there, um, McGuppy, to have been a completed A to B equals CD, not because it came close to hitting the one to one level, because as it was doing that, it created that nice big bullish engulfing candle right here from September 1st. Now, in this case here, the support level is going to be the low of that session. So that is 8207. As long as price holds 8207, you've got the potential for an A to B equals CD pattern. That should take price up towards the top of its profile at 8651. If I were to show you the other white background chart, you'd see an 8701 is the green oscillator and change line. So it does have a valid bottom, or we think that it does. Again, looking at that A to B equals CD. What should it do out here? Well, what it should do is at least go target 8651. But we should really investigate this stock further. So let's do that because we're uncertain as to whether the A to B equals CD pattern has really completed that one-to-one -one price projection move. So when in doubt, go take a look at the weekly chart, see what kind of signals we have there. So we'll switch over to the white background charts and voila, what do we have? We have a TD nine count top. Now when you typically form a TD nine count top, what price will do for that time frame that you're looking at is pick price back to its oscillator and change line. That is printing out at 77.75. So that's a piece of information out there, uh, McGuppy, that says, okay, maybe a bit more caution is warranted here. We're trying to see if we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD. When the weekly chart is saying, you know what, whether you do or you don't, I want to head down to around 77.74 and have a little pity party back there. So how would I look at it? What's the signal really over the course of the next uh, couple of weeks, which was really the question asked? If price closes below the bottom of that bullish hammer candle, that low, that which would also take you to below the bottom of its daily profile, at 82.07, then what price should do, I don't know how long it takes, is get back to test that red oscillator and change line. Again, that's at the 77.70-ish area. Right now it's at 77.73 on my chart out there. So, my guppy, I hope that that helps you out with regard to XBI. It didn't really answer the question, I suppose, or did it? I think that it did. I think that it did. The weekly is really suggesting to you and I that price wants to head lower. Now you're looking for the confirmation from the daily, which is can it take out the low of that bullish engulfing candle, which did volume on that day of 11.5 million. You're already at 5 million with two hours into trading. That says we're more like a 15 million ish type day out there. Certainly, what it says on a straight line basis is that that uh, low from uh, oh, September 1st out there that had 11.5 million shares, you're moving into that area with volume. So I would be careful out here. And the real confirmation, I think, McGuppy, will come from the 30-minute time frame chart. So which charts am I on, the white one? So look over here. Here's maybe where we get that signal. What do you mean, Steve-O? TD9 count top. That took place at 10 o'clock in the morning on the 2nd. You have a TD9 count bottom. That formed this morning at 10.30. If you close below that low, that low, by the way, is 81.87, that says we're likely to see lower price. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we still got a little bit of a mixed bag out there. The uh, Russell 2000 is the indice that is trading lower. It's the only uh, U.S. indice that I track that's trading lower. It's off six points out there. The Dow's up 92. S&P's up 15. Inside the Tiger's Den, the question from Jimmy goes like this. It says, uh, uh, Steve, on your short-term indicators, do we really do we retest today's lows on the major indices out there? So I've got the ES Mini uh, set of charts up here on our screen. And um, well, we can take a look at on the ES Mini on a 10-minute basis right now. You've got a TD9. You're saying my short-term time frames. So if we take a look at the uh, short, the shortest-term time frame that I guess I would really use out here is a 10-minute chart. Um, that's what Tom likes to use as well. So we'll use the 10-minute chart to help uh, you and I answer that question, Jimmy, as we tackle this. So what do we know on a 10-minute chart? Price pulled back, formed a TD9 count bottom. Price has moved off of that. Price is right now trying to take out a swing point. That's a swing point that formed at 11.10 this morning. We'll go take a look at my other set of charts and see what kind of volume as we're pushing into that. If price can take that out, then you'd have an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, the it that it has to take out, it would have to close about 39.43 and a quarter. Uh, you can see that you do have potential resistance, the TD9 count breakdown level at 39.51. So let's assume we get a confirm, confirmation of an A to B equals C to the upside which would take us beyond 39.5150, the answer to that question would be close above 39.5150, would say no. Uh, right now, its intent is not to go down in test lows, not that that can't change two hours from now, but where your question is really, I believe, what's the intent right now that we see? So it's really a 10 minute time frame chart out there that we're gonna take a look at. Now, with regard to the other charts out here that are worth noting, you still have a bottom pattern that exists for the five hour, for the four hour, the uh, two-hour chart as well, which has held that TD9 count breakout level. So you've got enough bottoming signals out here to suggest that price should move higher. But you're talking about intraday, what is it going to do? So now what we need to do is go change over to our intraday time frame charts where I get some volume. So that's really what's going to what we're going to do here next. So let's get over to that, which is right here. And here we've got the NQ. So, Jimmy, let's do this. Let's do this both for the NQ and the ES. Since I've got the NQ up right here, basically it's got the same pattern with regard to its 10-minute time frame chart. It formed a TD9 count bottom this morning. So the swing point that it's trying to take out is the one uh, from between 11 and 11.10. On the NQ, that was volume of 22,500 contracts. Right now, there's only four minutes in. We're at about 10,000 contracts. So we are very close on the volume matrix. 
It's not light volume. We can see the price is trading right on the NQ, that is, right in the resistance. That's the top of its uh, profile, which is at 11, I'm sorry, 12,121. So if price can close above that, you can see some descending trend line resistance as well. So what that's really telling you and I for the NQ, ooh, how do I do that? Um, I know how to do it. It's just going to take a second. Oops. It's going to take a second to populate. That population was, oops, I wanted to see if there was a, well, there is a TD9 count bottom. I wanted to see what that breakdown resistance level is at. And that is at, come on, populate for us. We don't have all day here. We just have a few minutes. 12, 188.75. So even if we get a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside, you still need to watch 12, 188.75. If price, price closes above that, then the A to B equals CD would fulfill itself. What's the A to B equals CD pattern potential on the NQ? Because we don't have a, it's got to close above that B point in order for that to occur. Well, it would look like this out here, uh, the A to B equals CD pattern, based upon the information we have now, which would give us a one to one price projection of 12, 267.50. Stevie would say, no way, Jose. And he'd say, no way, Jose, because you had a 0.382 retracement. It's really 38.9% out there. That's a shallow retracement. So if you take out the resistance levels, which is going to be that 12,188.75, then more likely than not, Jimmy, this would tell us about a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. That would do more than a one-to-one. -one. So you'd be looking at 12,324. What happens if uh, price doesn't take out that B point and continues to find resistance where it does at 12,121? Well, here comes another dollar that I owe to Tom. If you can't bust him to the upside, then price would try to bust him to the downside. So then, Jimmy, that gets back to the question, uh, what do the short-term charts, charts tell us that their intent is? And since the 10-minute chart here doesn't complete for another three minutes, we don't have that answer. But if we're pushing into a swing point, which it is, with volume, even if it doesn't take it out on this 10-minute session, says we got to watch the next 10-minute and the one after that. Because as you push into a swing point with volume, it says that you're going to go try to do that again. Does that make sense? Did that help you out? No, that was the NQ. We started with the ES. So let's be thorough out here and go see what the ES is doing. See if we've got a same, similar type of signal out here. We do from the standpoint price is pushing into that swing point. That's the swing point from 11 to 1110, 60,727 contracts. Right now, you're at 35,000 contracts with three minutes to go. So this is pushing into that swing point with lighter volume out here, but price is above its profile. So the only thing on a 10-minute chart that we've got out here is the resistance of its descending trend line area. So where does price need to close below to say, hey, I want to go retest those lows? I would say that if you take out the low of that last 10 minute bar, that last 10 minute bar is low is 39.21, that would be an indication to Stevie that price is gonna go back and retest this morning's lows out there. Is there anything else that Stevie can find to assist us to answer that question? And the answer is, there's really there's really not. So is it the ES or is it the NQ? How about the Dow? Why don't we just take a quick peek at the Dow out here, see what it's doing on a 10-minute basis, see if we get any kind of synergy. So it has pushed in and tested that swing point so far, that one from 11 o'clock, which had 5,500 contracts. You're at 3,000 contracts right now with a little less than two minutes to go. So And prices found support at 31 319. I'd say price would need to close below 31,319 for two consecutive bars to suggest that the Dow wants to go down and retest those lows out there. So you can see here we've been pretty consistent or the market's been pretty consistent. It has that descending trend line, a resistance area out there, and that applies to the 10 minute time frame for each. Now we'll just check out the uh, Russell 2000 as well, which has not behaved as uh, nicely. This morning, it does not have trend line resistance. It's pushing into a swing point from 11 o'clock this morning. That did volume of 6,900. You're at 6,500 right now. So price is pushing into that contract, even though it hasn't taken out the swing high. That swing high would be 1,805.60. Price should go back up there and at least test that level. So the weak indice out here, which would be the Russell, is suggesting even if it can't take out that swing point here with another within another 45 seconds, you should see another run for that. So, Jimmy, does that answer your question for you about uh, what are the intraday charts? Right now, it's just the 10-minute charts. Um, suggesting to you and I is uh, going on in the uh, marketplace. I'm going to say based upon the NQ volume out there. Well, let me let's go see what that what that actually was.
right now, get that final test out here. So the volume on that bar was uh, 17,000, and that was going into a 22,000, so a little bit light in the uh, loafers out there. But, um, you know, prices trade above the low of that last candle session. As long as that remains, it would suggest to you and I that price should go try to tackle that swing point once again. So that's uh, how we take a look at the intraday charts and get a feel for what they are doing out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We've got the uh, Dow that is trading up uh, about uh, 30 points, the S&P 8. NASDAQ won it off four. Russell's down seven. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's go take a look at a couple of requests out here. One from David H. in uh, Panama City. What a beautiful place that is. Talk about white sandy beaches. That's it. But the question goes like this. Hey, Steve, is it likely that N phase, uh, E-N-P-H is a ticker symbol, will take out the recent high of 308.88 before the next pullback occurs? So we take a look at N phase out here. You can see a real clear, David, you can see a real clear consolidation Within and the bottom of the consolidation is the bottom of its profile, 272.58. The top of the consolidation could be in that 308 ish area where you've got your resistance level. One resistance level is at the uh, come here, come here, uh, 306.50 level. You're asking, will it get to 308.88? 
you know, right now, if price today, here's what I can share with you. If price today closes above its uh, its uh, top of its daily profile, the top of that profile is 295.27. Then what I would say with certainty is price will go tag that oscillator and change line. That's a 301 and change. That's not at your 308 level. It doesn't tell me whether price will be able to close above the oscillator and change line. If it does, then I would say the answer to your question is it will at least go tag 308.88. Um, that's the high out there. I believe that's high. Let's go switch back and take a look at the black background chart to just confirm that. And let's see what kind of volume. We just spent some time on a 10-minute chart. You just uh, do the same pattern uh, out here on the uh, daily time frame chart. So end phase, the high 308.88. That is the trading day of August 8th. Volume of 4.2 million shares. So far at 1.7 with about, what, two and a half hours of trading. So if we multiply that times two, we're at about 34 it seems like you're you're coming into that swing point with lighter volume out there. So right now, a close above the top of its profile gets us up to that 30101 level. David H, thanks so much for writing in. Hope that helps you out. To finish off this show, we got to take a look at SCCO. That SCCO, this is for. Come on, get up here. There we go. SCCO is a uh, um, Southern Copper. When you look at SCCO and copper for me, I'm not in, but looking to put on a position has been testing low 4466. What do you think? We don't have time out here, unfortunately. You don't have a bottoming pattern just yet inside of SCCO for its daily time frame. What you'd like to see out here, Greg, is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. You'd then like to see price close above its center and change line, currently at 4676. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. Uh, stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock sharp on Monday. Take care.